Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome to Hill and Valley Creative. Today we're going to be giving you a tour of our studio. This is a video we've wanted to make for quite a while now, but we've been making small changes and working on the studio, but we feel it's in a good spot now to show you guys, so come on in. So our first stop on our tour is our waiting room. Out here we just have a couch for people that are waiting for their shoot to begin, as well as a little rack with some of our merchandise. These are shirts that we've made, um, as well as our latest hats these five panel hats, which are available for purchase. So come on into the main portion of our studio. Here you'll see right when you walk in is our meeting area. This is where we meet with clients as well as have a lot of our internal meetings. We have a nice big whiteboard to write down a lot of our ideas, um, as well as a couch and some chairs and our coffee table, which is full of books, different kinds of photography books to help generate inspiration and give you ideas for your shoot. The next stop on our tour is our kitchenette. This is everybody's favorite stop because we have our espresso machine which keeps us all going. As Rick talked about in a previous video, it's everyone's favorite uh, along with every syrup you can imagine so we can make any different type of coffee. Um, and then we have our sink and our small mini fridge. Uh, the coolest part about our kitchenette is our little camera collection. A lot of these cameras are personal to me and to other people who work here. Uh, some of them are cameras that my parents gave me from when they were photographers, or even cameras that my first boss gave me when I worked at the camera store. This is a Bolex that Tot's dad gave us. It's a 16 millimeter camera. Uh, we have a Pentax K1000, everybody's favorite beginner camera, which was actually a camera that my mom gave me, and then a Canon AE-1 that my dad gave me. All right, so moving on, we have our post-production area, which is essentially just four IKEA desks pushed together. Um, I thought it would be a great idea to have like a collaborative work environment where we could all talk and bounce ideas off each other. You can see we have all of our computers here. Um, we have the Mac Studio, which is our newest computer, which Rick edits on. The Mac Mini with the ultra-wide monitor that Rose works on. Uh, over here, we keep just an extra monitor and keyboard for somebody to work on with the laptop. Lately, Brian's been working over there on our YouTube videos. In that corner, we have Tot's iMac where she does most of the pre-production and photography. And all of those computers are connected to the same UPS, which is an uninterrupted power supply. So that way, if the power goes out, we'll be able to properly shut down the machines so nothing gets damaged. And on top of all of that, they're all connected to the same NAS drive, which is a network attached storage. That way, everybody can access the same data. And if we have different project files moving around, you can always access it and open it um, while connected to the NAS drive. And you can see on the back wall here in our post-production area, we have a series of whiteboards, which we use to track the progress of a lot of our projects. So any of our projects that we end up editing, we will keep on this whiteboard. They all have a certain code that is associated with the client, and we can keep track of which stage of post-production it's in. And that way, Rick can make sure all of the videos get moved along in an efficient manner and get the attention that they need to get done on time. So moving on, we have kind of an open, empty corner here. We usually like to keep most of the studio as open as possible. That way, if we want to set up a shoot in a corner, we can easily do so. Um, we used to only have up to this portion here, there was a wall when we first moved in. So we only had about 800 square feet. And so this was our full production area where we would do all of our shoots. But since then, about a year ago, we knocked down this wall and we acquired about an extra 1,200 square feet on this side, which we use specifically just for production. So over here, we keep all of our production equipment, our lighting, our backdrops, anything that involves an actual shoot. You can see in this corner, we have a lot of different grip equipment. We have keep our C-stands over here, as well as any diffusion panels, um, anything to assist with lighting on a shoot. And we will usually keep the studio set up with like a white backdrop, which is the most common thing that people request when shooting here. We also rent the space out, so people will often come in and bring their own backdrops, but we do have other backdrops available upon request. I can show you those in a second. This is probably my favorite light modifier we own. It's just a massive parabolic softbox. It's really easy to get great results from this. So we keep this thing set up pretty much all the time. And in the beginning, when we first started out, we had basically like one or two LED lights. So those would have to go everywhere with us. 
But now that we have a studio, we've invested in lights that can just live here. So those are um, Nanlite FS 300s, which just stay in the studio full time. There's two of them. Um, and then we also have our location lighting bag. So if we wanna take any of our lights on location, which we have two additional LED lights that we often bring with us on shoots. Um, but you can see this is the Think Tank Studio Manager 50. We've had this for a while. Um, you can pretty much fit your whole studio in here. We will usually bring two lights. Right now there's two strobes in here, which are battery powered. We just used those on a shoot the other day. And you can also hold full size C, sta C stands in the back here. So this has been our saving grace when it comes to shooting on location. Okay, moving on to the back section of the studio here. Um, you'll see we keep these curtains set up to help segregate the studio. That way, if you wanna use this space for something specific back here, you can block out any of the light or sometimes we'll have people back here like models or makeup artists that need a little bit of privacy and we can close this space off and use it just for um, that purpose. We also keep back here sometimes We'll do uh, studio photography like products and smaller tabletop setups. And for that, we often also want to block out any of the stray light and just focus on the lighting equipment we're using. Um, and that way we can ensure that we're getting accurate results when it comes to color. Um, so back behind our tabletop setup, you'll see we have a bunch of different backdrops that we keep on hand um, and a nice little backdrop holder that Joel built for us. And in this corner, we keep extra stools and chairs for people to sit on for your shoot. Uh, on this wall, we have a series of tables which holds a lot of our actual lights. So you'll see the cases for um, our LED lights as well as our strobes. We also keep products over here that need to be shot. So all of these are products from clients that we need to photograph or get video of. And we also keep a lot of little white cards and light modifiers and a turntable, anything that can help with more of a product style shoot. Over on this side, we have our um, tube light station. This is where we hang up our tube lights when we're done with them. We have about six tube lights um, and they can be hung up and charged here. Rick built this little station. It's been great to keep everything organized and make sure that the tube lights get charged at the end of the shoot. And down below is where we keep all of our light modifiers. Moving on. Okay, so now we're back where we started. On this half of our entryway is what we call our color correction suite. We keep this out here where there's no windows, so there's no extra light. Uh, you can see we have my uh, 2020 5K iMac that I work on attached to this 55 inch LG TV. Um, this gives us a better representation of what actual color is gonna look like in a finished video. That way we know we're getting exactly what we want out of it. And you can see we also have the resolve panel, um, the micro panel, which is great for color grading and helps speed things up too. All right, so that concludes this half of the studio. We're gonna move over to our other half on the other side of the hall, which is our podcast room. So here we are, the podcasting and equipment storage room. Uh, you can see half of the room here is dedicated just for podcasting. We have a couch and some microphones and some different backdrops. It all changes depending on who is uh, doing the podcast. We produce podcasts for a bunch of different clients and we kind of tailor it towards whoever is, uh, whatever their needs are, whatever their style is. Um, this is like our most basic version of the podcast, just a white backdrop, some microphones and a couch. You can see behind me here, we have the podcasting station where one of us will sit and actually man while they're recording the podcast to make sure everything's going well. The audio sounds good and we also have a monitor so we can see the cameras that are recording. And then we have a soft box and we'll usually add another light in here depending on the time of day in which we're recording the podcast. And then like I said, on this other half here, we have our equipment storage. So it used to just be this Husky, which Rick made a whole video on, but now we've kind of outgrown it and we have some cabinets and tables and some racks as well. So um, over here you'll see we have our tripods and moving over to this cabinet is where we keep most of our camera bodies and lenses. So these are all of the different cameras we use for video and photography. We have our audio recorder as well as um, an extra bag that we usually pack for on the go shoots. And then in this cabinet here we have a lot of our drone equipment, our um, FPV drones, 
our smaller drones like our Air 2S and then some microphones as well. Um, and then on the pegboard we have our main boom microphone, a little tube light that we'll bring on location, and some FPV drones, which are our newest drones. We have a three inch uh, Cinewhoop drone, which is for indoors, and then our five inch drone, which we use for more of um, acrobatics and uh, more dynamic flying. And then out here we keep our BS1H and our FX9. We like to keep them built just in case we want to grab them and go on a shoot. Um, so that way they're all prepared. You can see we use the BS1H mostly with this anamorphic lens and the FX9 um, has the same mount as our A7S or A7C so we can use any of those lenses in the cabinet with that. This is our battery charging station. You can see we have a bunch of different chargers. These are all charged batteries. And then usually if a battery needs to be charged, we have this dead bin, but we most often will just leave it out by the charger because there's usually a queue of batteries that need to be charged just because we're shooting so often. Then we have our media, our cleaning and filters, our monitors, and then more cleaning, or more uh, ND filters. And we have it set up like this, so when we're going on a shoot, you can simply um, grab a bag and then grab some lens wraps or um, just soft cushions to put in the bag, and that way you could pack everything um, all at once and kind of go down this like assembly line and that way you're not missing anything. Everything you need is here and then anything that's extra might be over here in the Husky like extra cables, um, action cameras, uh, we have a bunch of different screws and stuff and batteries. These are more specific things that you might need once in a while um, and not on every shoot. So we usually keep them in here because this is a little bit more organized. We have all of our extra filters and stepping rings. It's pretty much the same from when Rick did the video on the Husky, but a lot of the actual equipment has made its way to different spots in the studio. These are extra propellers for drones and extra remotes that we don't use. And then again, we have more audio equipment like recorders and microphones, cables, just so everything can kind of stay in one place and fit with other similar accessories. And then back here uh, on these racks, we usually just keep extra props and bags, larger things that we don't really need often, uh, as well as spare tripods, our Inspires on here. These are things that we don't need access to very often, and we just need a place to keep them out of the way. Also have a sink in here, which is great for when we're hosting podcasts. People have access to water and are able to clean dishes. But other than that, I think that covers about everything with the studio. So thank you so much for joining us. Please be sure to like and subscribe to this channel if you wanna see more content like this. We have another version of the studio tour coming your way soon.